Welcome to another Age Soul War author interview. And today we have a very well published historian with us, with Kenneth Snow from Auburn University, an award winning historian who got his PhD in 1990 from the University of Illinois and is also a graduate of Virginia Tech and the University of Kentucky. So you have come, been around quite a bit in the universities, in the university world there. Um, he has written a good number of books, eight, if the Auburn website is correct, including 19, in 1994, Southwest Virginia Railroad, 2002, Perryville as a Battle History, and then the newest book oh, in 2010, I forget here, 2010, Reluctant Rebels, and then the newest book behind me here, The Howling Storm, on weather in the Civil War. He also edited a few books, including also behind me, Yellowhammer War and the History of Alabama. So to start, Ken, tell us a little bit about the origins of the book. How did you come to write a book about weather and climate in the Civil War? I think this book really has two origin stories, and one is a lot longer than the other. Uh, I grew up in Southwest Virginia, in Montgomery County, in the mountains, with my grandparents, and they owned a farm. So I spent much of my early life, really until college, sometimes beyond college, um, working on the farm. So I know what it's like to work in the heat trying to get up hay or you know, sloshing through mud and cow manure to the barn in the middle of winter trying to feed and water animals. I tell a story in the book about now I planted an entire field of corn one summer, and then we had a drought, and I watched it die. So I grew up in a family that was very attached to the land, I think more so than many people of my era, and certainly today. Sometimes I ask my students how many of them grew up on farms, and I get one or two hands. And when you're farming, Obviously, weather is really, really important. It's not just the reality of weather, it's going to rain tomorrow, we have to get the hay in the barn, but also the concept of weather. Uh, my grandfather was obsessed with watching the local weather forecasts. Uh, I learned probably when I was four or five years old not to make noise when the weather was on. It was okay to make a ruckus through the news and especially the sports, but I had to be quiet during the weather because he was really aware of keeping track of it and trying to understand how that factored into running the farm. So weather has always been important to me. It's, it's ingrained in my brain at this point. It's funny though, I never really made the connection between weather and civil war until a little over 20 years ago when I agreed to write a history of the Battle of Perryville. And I discovered pretty quickly that weather in this case, that very severe drought of the late summer of 1862 was going to be a major character, in some ways as important as Bragg or Juan Carlos Buell. And especially writing that book, uh, there were so many points where I saw how important weather conditions were in terms of the march to Kentucky, uh, the fact that there was so little water and food, Bragg had to alter his entrance into Kentucky. By the time they got to the battlefield, a lot of the men in both armies were sick and dehydrated because not only had they not been able to find much water, but what they could find was often full of bacteria covered with slime, not the sort of water that they should have been drinking. And the battle itself began as a fight over some springs. So weather was incredibly important to that book. And that started to seep into my classroom lectures. Obviously, I would talk about the drought of Perryville. And then I, going back through my readings, I started thinking about you know, the flooding at Fort Henry mm -hmm. or the sleet at Fort Donaldson or the flooding in Shiloh and on the peninsula and how that affected McClellan's march up the peninsula. And it seemed like I was constantly bringing more weather into my classroom. There was a point, I think, for four or five years where it became a cliche. At some point, I would just say to my students, somebody needs to write a really good book about Civil War weather. And we have all of these dots 
mm. campaign histories, home front studies, memoirs, all the way. We know all these dots, but no one's ever really connected them. Somebody ought to do that. And nobody really did. So quite literally, I was sitting at my, my breakfast table one morning. It was six or seven months after I finished Reluctant Rebels, and I always feel so lost when I finish a project. I'm trying to decide what to do with my life. What do I do now? Um, and I had a crazy thought. So maybe I could write that weather book. I need to learn a lot about meteorology and soil and all sorts of things, but maybe if no one else is going to, I could I could give it a shot. So I mean that's 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 the origin of the book. It really started with research on a different project, and then it went through my teaching, my classroom, and it came back to my research. And that's why we're here today, I guess. <laughs> and usually those are the greatest books when it sort of builds out of classroom experiences to kind of say, oh, well, I taught it all the time, and I always thought the book would be nice. And yeah. uh, you did kind of take away a little bit of another question I was thinking about was sort oh, of sorry. like the experiential aspect of it. And it seems like you have quite an experience when it comes to the outdoors there with growing up on a farm. 